too late. We're live. Hi, We're welcome live. everyone. Um, Jack, get ready. Get ready to post on the other social media. Don't worry, Hugo. On it's Facebook all going to be and... happening. Hello, um, and welcome to the Vern Bar Quiz. Hello, hello, hello. The if you're joining us, yeah. If you're joining us uh, at a later recording, do skip forward. Uh, five yeah. or six minutes That's until you don't the quiz starts because we're just waiting for people to join at the moment. It's a very special quiz indeed. We've got an international superstar in front of the show on screen. If you want to guess who that is, and also there's another sort of faint aura in the image behind us. Oh no, I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure how I feel about this. To be honest with you, um, how are you, Hugo? Oh, I'm having a great time. Having That's a great time. Thing. Enjoyed making this quiz. It's, it should be. It's promising to be a good one. Uh, me and Jack Very have been exciting. talking for a while with this with this screen up, and every time we look at um, the sort of watermark of Jack's face, we launch into seeing the spirit <laughs> in the sky. <laughs> it's um, it has but to be we can't sing it because we'll get copyright struck. Any excuse, yeah. And as we found out by all of our copyright strike videos on YouTube, there are, there are a lot many times happened. that that's happened. We've been struck many times. Um, right, I'll just post the link on the on He'll Be Live. He'll, he'll Be the Saucy. Can we just change the channel? He'll be, he'll be, he'll be, he'll be, he'll be Live. <laughs> I think it basically is what it's for. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, this is for all the people that haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel. So True. Because everyone else will get post notifications on. Um, yeah. Uh, can, we show, can we have a little time check? The 321 Um Okay, okay. Three, two, one, go. Go. Okay, there's a, probably about uh, a two-second delay, but that's okay. Is there? There's a 20-second delay between us and, and you if you're writing <laughs> lots of things in the chat, which I'm sure you will be. Oh, no. As, do, do put in the YouTube chat your well wishes for Jack as he retires from his student career. To be fair, it wouldn't be a, a he'll be Vern Barquiz without a bit of a delay. Some of our best that's have true. been... It's traditional. It's been some long delays. Um, live now. App. Okay. Post. Not now. Oh. I got panicky that I posted it as myself again, which would have been really bad. But no, I didn't. It's very I stressful. I realise I need to make a little note of something. Okay. I'm happy just to keep sharing. Let's carry on sharing, yeah. I just need to... Have a little, have a little look. See, have a little look at you do, as it were. Please do. Um, Thanks. Thank you. Share. I'm sharing it onto um, a group, and that group is going to be Beaters Playtime. So I'm sharing it onto Beaters Playtime. So if you uh, subscribe to Beaters Playtime, that's where you'll see it. If you're not, go on, get yourself into Beaters Playtime. It's a place to be. Um, Am I right? Or you should. Yes. Um, and what's the other? It's nearly there. Oh gosh, where's my where's my cursor gone? Oh gosh, what's going on? It's full. I just I've just lost my cursor in a fun twist. Oh no! I went here. Um. Okay, so just showing it into all the relevant places as we speak, and then we'll get started in a couple of minutes. How long have you been here? Um, and you can't guess anything at the moment because there's nothing on screen. But shortly, you'll be able to guess it's our superstar friend of the show who is who appears on screen. Oh dear. Oh, that's annoying. It's fine. What's going on? Uh, oh wait, I've got a cursor again. Oh, there's no uh, there's no PowerPoint up now. No, there isn't. Sorry, I was just checking. I was just writing down some art, some useful notes for the answers that will appear later. So sorry, here we go. As always, if you're joining us, do you try and guess the interview superstar in front of the show is on screen. Also, uh, there's a little aura of our good friend Jack Rawdon. Uh, this is this is the Jack special, although Jack felt a bit I, sub subconscious right self-conscious writing that uh, as the as the stream title. I uh, wasn't aware of this being the theme, so is this isn't kind of some kind of massive narcissistic um, expression. I can't believe Jack made this aware. quiz all about him. No, yeah. I didn't. It, it wasn't. It wasn't me. Um, right. Um, uh, apparently, someone thought that Jack Rodden died a, in prison. Yeah, someone suggested that Jack Rodden died in prison. That's actually an example of the Mandalorian what? effect. So that's, that's <laughs> not correct, I'm afraid. Um, you may think, oh, hang on. that That's not Durham 
on the background. Jack, what is the background? Uh, that is, um, of course, the immortal Ipswich Town Hall. It's the town hall in the middle of Ipswich, and that is the uh, square around it. That is the um, corn exchange. It's the corn exchange, that's what it's called, that little area there. Hey. It's in the lovely town of Ipswich. I was thinking we have a corn exchange, corn exchange in Red Roof, but I think it's actually a mining exchange. See, there you go. That's the difference between Suffolk and Cornwall. Yeah, Suffolk has corn. Yep. Cornwall has uh, mines. <laughs> That's really weird, actually, because Cornwall has the word corn in its name. So if anywhere has got a corn exchange... It, it has the word mining in the name. Yeah, that's mad. Moving heck. Um, so there we go. Give that some thought. <laughs> you can go if you want. It's a lovely place. Um, it's quite a recent picture as well, because um, and, that water and so, features... And so, there. Jack, why did you pick to have it switch as the background today? Well, I, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't privy to this this particular move. Yeah, but, there's a lot um, of surprises. There's a lot of surprises for Jack in this quiz, but don't worry. All of the questions will. You don't have to be. You don't have to know Jack really intimately to, to be able to get this. Oh, it's just good. some of them pay pay a little homage to our good friend. That's good to hear. The man himself. Uh, um, but yeah, this is where I. This is the town I live in. Um, if anyone was under was wondering why Ipswich is featuring, it's a lovely town. I grew up there in Ipswich. So that is where... And you're there right now. No. (laughs) No, I'm not. I was, but I'm not anymore. I'm uh, in Durham. So what time should we get started, Hugo? It is now 25-2. So how are we doing for people? I think possibly... Um... Right. Good. Okay, here we go. Onwards. So we start this international start in front of the show, of course, was the inimitable, more than friend of the show, grandfather of the show. Harvey Lamb. International start in front of the show. What a photo. What a man. A dear friend of the show. And um for of course our first round can no, be none other than the Lynx round. Like, how does the Lynx round work? Well, you go the Lynx round works as follows. So we're gonna give you nine seemingly general knowledge questions but in fact they're all going to be linked by the 10th question the answer to which will be what links those previous nine questions what links those previous nine general knowledge questions together there will be a common theme and we want you to tell us what that theme is and also answer the previous nine questions uh so there you go the links round works as just pres- as as followed there we go there we go so question number one off, off, go on and go ahead jack okay uh, question number one, Westminster is used as a metonym to refer to Parliament and the British government. What metonym is used to refer to the British civil service? Westminster is used as a metonym to refer to Parliament and the British government. What metonym is used to refer to the British civil service? Mm. So, metonym, uh, I like to teach you a, little, a few a little useful linguistics terms. Yeah, uh, so I've never metonym. Them metonym is a, a word that is used to refer to a bigger thing, but it's like you use a different word. Like when you when you mean like the England men's rugby team, mm-hmm. you might, the rugby union team, you might just say England. So you wouldn't say, oh, I really hope that the England men's rugby team win. You just say, I hope that England win. And that's an example of a method. In. I see, I see. So would it be for like, so like for New Zealand, would, they, would that be the All Blacks? Is that method? In? No, that's just the name of the team. <laughs> that's just a nickname, I think. I see, I see. But it's a good example. Uh, question Thanks. number two. Uh, question number two. To whom was Candle in the Wind originally dedicated? To whom was Candle in the Wind originally dedicated? Um, oh. an interesting one there. So if you know this song, who it's by, that might help you potentially. I mean, or it doesn't, or it couldn't help you at all. Um, or you know that's just an extra fact that won't get your point yeah. but if you know that's good for you absolutely i hope you enjoyed the quiz poster this week jack it had a little picture of outline of your head yeah i did again i didn't realize that was going to be there but um this is nice in right, fact question number three question number three uh what is the capital city of the mexican state nuevo leon its name literally means king mountain what is the capital city of the Mexican state, Nueva Leon? Its name literally means King Mountain. Um, mm. I like to, I'm, I'm trying to work in a few more um, Mexican state questions. I feel like all too often, 
U.S. state takes precedent. So we've got to try and work in some Mexican states. No, I'd like to see it, to be fair. Um, what was I going to say? Something about, what were we talking about before, before this question? Metonyms? No. Something after that, but it's fine. Mm. We, it's absolutely fine. No worries. It's fine. Don't, wait, what was the last question, anyway? Um, the wind? Oh, I don't know. It's fine. On we can pop. move forward. On we go. Question number four. Who wrote the popular TV series It's a Sin, as well as much of the 2005 revival of Doctor Who? Who wrote the popular TV series It's a Sin, as well as much of the 2005 revival of Doctor Who? Oh, by the way, loyalists may notice that I'm not wearing my traditional quiz jumper. Uh, that's because this, I felt, was a more Jack Rodden-esque jumper to pay homage to the great man himself. But so that it's in and shot, as is tradition, I do have my normal quiz jumper, head of quizzes uniform behind me. Oh, what a relief. What a relief. Um, thank you very much, Hugo. Um, <laughs> Anytime. Um, so, yeah, this is... Um, I mean, potentially, this won't be the last quiz that I ever present. Um, oh. I mean, that's up to... That's up to the, the other man. I didn't think we were going to have, be having this conversation on air. <laughs> Question number five. Question number five. In chess, what colour is generally observed to have a slight advantage? In chess, what colour is generally observed to have a slight advantage? Um, so there you go. Give that some thought. Um, who knows? I.e. What, what, statistically, what colour wins more often, I mean. Yep. Which does suggest they have an advantage, you know? absolutely so um yeah what does it mean um if you know the link already well done uh, there's still a few more questions to get it though if you haven't got it yet so don't worry if you haven't right <laughs> question number six <laughs> question number six what is this um are we looking for species i assume uh yeah i'm not sure i don't sure, i don't know if it's technically a species but what is it, you know? Yeah, species, probably. Okay. Not, I don't, the answer isn't just bird, I mean. Okay. Okay, so we're probably looking for something more specific than just bird, but less specific, potentially, than the actual Not exact like species. Less, less a spotted, crested dove, or whatever. Yeah, yeah for, for example, if it was, uh, like, the lesser black-backed gull or something, um, we want just gull. Yeah, if you will. It's a one one word we're after for this answer. Um, question number seven. Question number seven. Sharing a name with a Tolkien dwarf, what dried edible seaweed is often used in sushi? Sharing a name with a Tolkien dwarf, what dried edible seaweed is often used in sushi? Um, mm, what could it be? Remember, there's a link between all these, these answers. So if you can think of that, then props yeah. to you. I'll get you an extra point at the end. Yeah, definitely. Um, you're a fan of the Lord of the Rings, Hugo? I, I haven't read them, but I am a big fan of the films. <sighs> That's okay. It's one of those things that people who have read Lord of the Rings do do you feel slightly better than people who <laughs> think I mean, have a slight sense of superiority. It is just unfortunately just something that occurs. Um, I I'm not saying that. I necessarily feel that way, but um, I have read them all. What can I say? Question number eight. <laughs> Question number eight. Uh, Edward I of England was also known as the what of the Scots? Edward I of England was also known as the what of the Scots? So uh, give that some thought there. Um, I just, it's very nice seeing uh, Ipswich Town Centre in the summer there. Uh, the last time I was there was probably last week. And uh, well, it was also sunny. Quite that, wasn't looking quite that nice, no. Uh, they call it the sun, the sun shadow of the country, don't they? <laughs> we suck up all the sun. No, no, no it's like, there are, there's no, there's always no sun. It's always really rainy. Oh, uh, yeah, that is that is Suffolk, to be fair, but well known for its rain. Mm. Um, question number, the next one, nine. Question number nine. What term is used to describe a low league football club who knocks a much better club out of the FA Cup? What term is used to describe a low league football club? Who knocks out a much bigger club out of the FA Cup? What could it be? What term is used here? And it will fit into the link. Well, well, well. But maybe by now, I mean, hopefully by now you've got the link because uh, I don't think question 10 will give you that many more hints. 
Have you got the link, Jack? Uh, no. Did, did you do the classic thing where you accidentally didn't pay attention? Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. I find it hard to do quizzes that I'm, ta- I'm like saying. That's fine. Question number 10. Of course. Question number 10. What, what's the link? What could possibly fit those previous nine answers together? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> so, <laughs> KSL uh, link. Be, I mean, I had a potential thought. I'll, um, I'll, well, I'll nip through them again, Jack, and you can have a think if you might know if you might yeah actually, that, that, the link. that'd be great thank you okay uh okay westminster is a metonym uh for parliament british government what metonym is used to refer to the civil service british civil service i just got it question, i just got it i got the link <laughs> question number two to whom was candle in the wind originally dedicated um what is the capital city of nueva leon it means king mountain question number four who wrote it's a sin and the 2005 revival of doctor who Question number five. What colour is observed to have a slight advantage in chess? Question number six. What is this? What is this creature? Um, what? Okay, it's trying to say with a, do- with a do- Tolkien dwarf, what dried edible seaweed is used in sushi? Uh, w- Edward I was the what of the Scots? Uh, what term is used to describe a low league football club who knocks a much bigger club out of the FA Cup? Uh, question number 10. What's the link? You, are you confident you got you got the link, Jack? I'm pretty confident, yeah. It just clicked when I saw them again. Um, Nicely done. There we go. Wow. What a, what right, a first so That was our, our ordinary links round. And now on with uh, the next the next round. We've got some sort of special to pay homage, to pay homage, I don't know, to um, the great work done by Social Secretary Jack Rawdon this year. Uh, we have got some round specifically associated with him so first up uh, he is a suffolk boy born and bred and so it, we've got we've got a suffolk round oh it's right. the suffolk edition of you have reached your definition oh yes you have reached your definition so what we're going to do is we're going to show you uh 10 definitions of words and we want you to say what the say what the answer is to each of these questions all of the answers just so happen to be places in suffolk Oh, so, we're, so basically we've got 10 questions and all of them places in Suffolk don't I'd say not all of them are massive places some of them are like very small hamlets so don't worry if uh, you don't like answer the question don't worry about whether you whether you can think of it as a as a Suffolk <laughs> place name if you know what I mean we do um, not, not I, I imagine Suffolk Jack places have heard of some of these yeah we'll see I guess right question number one named after a 17th century scientist what is the international system of units derived Unit of force. Named after a 17th century scientist, what is the international system of units derived unit of force? Um uh, I can't actually think of that one. <laughs> That's not we're not going we are not no, for I, great it was a Wikipedia um list of place names in, in Suffolk. So they are all real. It's just whether or not they're they might be very tiny. Yeah. Um, Annabelle says she thought you were from Norfolk, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna have to. Um, I don't know. I don't know how to respond to that. Um, just tell her she's from Merseyside, and it's about the same. <laughs> yeah, you're from Merseyside, Annabelle. Um, question number two: What surname links a variety of banana and a notable Manx sports person? What surname links links a variety of banana and a notable Manx sports person? Yeah, that that one. I I know where that one is. You know this place. This is a this is a fun this is a fun it's a fun time, um, yeah. Have you been to Wangford, by the way? No, I know where it is though. I think it's up south, up towards Southwold. Um, don't give it away. <laughs> Sorry, no, I didn't think I didn't manage to find another definition of Southwold. Funnily enough, yeah. oh, that around. would be that would be challenging. Um, okay, question number three: On which headland can mainland Europe's only wild monkey population be found? What? On which headlands can mainland Europe's only wild monkey population be found? Wait. <laughs> this this place in Suffolk didn't even have a Wikipedia article about it. Yeah, I'm not surprised. <laughs> I've, I've never heard of this in my life. I think this did describe itself as a hamlet. It's probably just one house. <laughs> we just have to have this house name. <laughs> yeah, so don't, like, like you say, don't rely too much on your knowledge of Suffolk to answer these questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Um, Suffolk is a place with a lot of tiny villages. So. Exactly. Right, question number four. 
What was the first name of Fleetwood Mac's Mr. Buckingham? What was the first name of Fleetwood Mac's Mr. Buckingham? Yeah, I... Oh, no, I don't know. What's your, is your shortcoming the question or the Suffolk place? The question. I don't know the answer to that one. No shame there. No. No. Um, what, do you know where the sign is from? What, where's... Um, it, it was from somewhere nearby, obviously. I can't remember what it said. Nearby, near to what? Near um, to Wangford, like presumably the road from that the nearby town to Wangford. <laughs> yeah, that um, makes sense. Question number five: The sclera, the sclera, and the macula are parts of which human organ? The sclera, maybe, and the macula are parts of which human organ? Yeah, this 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 one. I think this is the biggest one uh, that you've done so far. This is yeah, this one's a market yeah. town, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've been there once, maybe. I wouldn't necessarily say it's on my radar massively. No, not many of them are. Not many of the big places. Like, it's hard to come up with another definition for, like, Felix Stowe, for example. Yeah, Saxmundham. Mm, yeah, quite tricky. Uh, question number six. Which London railway station is the fifth busiest in Britain and is the gateway from London to the West Midlands, North West England, North Wales and Scotland? Which London railway station is the fifth busiest in Britain and is the gateway from London to the West Midlands, North West England, North Wales and Scotland? According to the Wikipedia page about this London railway station. Again, I assume this is... Um... I don't know this place off the top of my head. Again, I'm a, I'm really thinking the wrong on the railway station. To be fair, could be done. <laughs> could be done. It's a, it's impressive, isn't there? That there's you wouldn't have, <laughs> li, the famous Liverpool isn't the one that's in Suffolk, is it? <laughs> no. no, it's not. Um, question number seven. What was what is this politician's surname? Was this politician's surname? <sighs> This actually is actually the one where I'm trying to think of places in, in Suffolk that are, are politician surnames. Well, you've got a bit of an advantage there. But you have I some Suffolk I, people on your team, I suppose. Yeah, I, I guess. Um, I don't know something. But there you go. Um, if you know your Suffolk trivia and you know this person, then you'd be in a great position to answer this question. He's got very impressive hair. He does. I'm pretty sure he's real as well. Yeah, I'd imagine so. Flowing um, grey, luscious locks. Yeah. So right, what was... Sorry. No, yeah, no, go for it. Question number eight. What was the surname of the English modernist sculptor who created the piece Single Form, which now stands outside the UN headquarters in New York? What was the surname of the English modernist sculptor who created the single the piece Single Form, which now stands outside the United Nations headquarters in New York? I think I know that, but I don't know an equivalent place in Suffolk again. But as we've established with one of the questions, <laughs> it <doesn't laughs> yeah, they're not massive places. Um, is it this one? Uh, nice job. I think this this particular art piece has appeared in the quiz before. <laughs> has it actually? Yeah, but that was a while ago. To be fair, we have done so many of these that general knowledge is starting to repeat itself. Yeah, we've run out of just things in the world that an answer could be. Yeah, exactly. Uh, question number nine. Which Hammer, which which Harry Potter character surname has the next highest number of mentions after Harry, Ron, Hermione, Dumbledore, and Hagrid? Which Harry Potter character, their surname, has the next highest number of mentions after Harry, Ron, Hermione, Dumbledore, and Hagrid? When I was when I was younger, I used to think that this this place was actually named after the Harry Potter character. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, I think it is. Have you been to this place? Many times. Is it quite yeah, small? It's, it's quite small, but it's got a. Um, a point of interest that Ooh. does draw people from far, far and wide. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And this, the, the question number 10 was quite hard to write because I don't really know what this... It's hard to define the thing that the answer is, but so you hopefully you'll be able to get it from this. Question number 10. What type of Scottish settlement originally referred to a town with a royal charter? What type of Scottish settlement originally referred to a town with a royal charter? I don't know. Let's hope it's true. It's probably pronounced funny. Oh, from Stooky. <laughs> that one is really weird. Did I tell you that or did you? You told me about Stooky. I didn't know about Stooky. Spelt stiff key. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. Honestly. I didn't okay. know. I'll nip through these again. 
Uh, named after a 17th century scientist, what is the international system of units derived the unit of force? Question number two, what surname links a variety of banana and a notable Manx sports person? Question number three, on which headland can mainland Europe's only wild monkey population be found? Question number four, what was the first name of Fleetwood Mac's Mr. Buckingham? Mr. Buckingham. Question number five, the Sclera, how would you pronounce that word, Jack? Sclera? Sclera. The Sclera, Sclera. and the macula are parts of which human organ? Question number six, which London railway station is the fifth busiest in Britain and is the gateway to the, the West Midlands, North West England, North Wales and Scotland? Question number seven, what's this politician's surname? What's his surname? Question number eight, was the surname of English modernist sculptor who created the single form which stands outside the United Nations headquarters in New York, the UNHQ in NY, um, and who has the sixth highest number of mentions in Harry Potter after Harry, Ron, Hermione, Dumbledore, and Hagrid? And question number 10, what type of Scottish settlement originally referred to a town with a royal charter? There we go, so that's that round done. And... Um, Jack, I, I hope you're looking forward to this next round. This, I think, might be my, my greatest work ever. Oh, wow. I'm very I'm incredibly this, excited. This is a round I like to call Jack Alike. Oh. We've recycled an old background for this one. <laughs> well, that's a really the throwback. What was this one? This is a, a background this, from. This was, I think, the, the Christmas quiz the, in 2019. Yeah, I think it might be because we took pictures um, for this, didn't we? <laughs> So basically, this round, I'm going to show you a picture of a famous person that looks a bit like Jack, <laughs> and you have to, and you just have to say who the person is. Ah, uh, great! This so is this is fun. going to be a fun one for Jack, I think. Uh, yeah, so that's it. So just name the name the person from the photo, from the image. Question number one: They all look like Jack. They all look <laughs> very much like Jack Rawdon. Really? Question number one. <laughs> Question number one, who is this person that looks a lot like Jack Rodden? <laughs> oh, no. You're in for a treat, Jack. Uh, I think um, of all of them, this probably one looks the most like you. Okay, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> we do slightly um, stray from reality later on. <laughs> uh, um, there we go. I guess I, there's not much to tell that, really. Um, no, there we go. So who's this person? Okay, question number two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I take that back. I think this one looks the most like you. No, no, please. <laughs> so who is this person? Who is uh, this person? Uh, if it's an actor on screen, by the way, we want the name of the actor rather than the name of the character. Or any of the character, any of the <laughs> This makes me feel very uneasy. <laughs> is it because you don't know what's coming next? Yeah. Okay, this one's more com complimentary. Question number three. Oh. <laughs> Who is yeah. this? We want the name of the actor, please. <sighs> um, so there you go. If you, hopefully this would be good for you if you know your, potentially, your um, pop culture. You and see? you know your people, if you know your people who look like Jack. Yeah, this is the this this is around, around you. Uh, question number four. <laughs> uh, I, I forgot about this one, but I don't take it back. Uh, I mean, I would, you know, I'd be, you know, very flattered. Um. <laughs> so name this person. Um, um, this was this was this was a fun one to make. I did have to. Um, you'll see later in the quiz. I did have to use some various um, computer tools to help me. Uh, so question number five. Who is this? Who is this oh. person? Which looks a bit like Jack. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, so they gave, some, gave this one some thought. Um, I can imagine this person being your dad. I know what your dad looks like, though. And it's not exactly the same as this. <laughs> I'd say he looks nothing. Like I mean, he doesn't look unlike my dad. But also, he doesn't look like my dad. Mm, yeah, I guess. Do you like the the moustache that's entirely confined to the bottom of the lip? It's incredibly un unsettling. I, I'm not. Well, you just see it, all the lip above it. Okay. <laughs> so awful. Question number six. I think. Yeah. Question number six. Um, uh, a friend of the show, Charlotte Hunter, sent me the link a link to a website where you can put in a picture of someone and it says celebrities that look like them. 
So these next three are using that website. So this person, uh, I mean, who, who, what was the name of this this famous person? Is this not just? Have they not just seen like the shape of my glasses? No, but like, I think I think there is something in the eyes as well with this person. Maybe, maybe actually. And like some of them didn't even like the pictures that they offered didn't even have glasses. Do you think that uh, before we go on to them, do you think they uh, actually do share much of a resemblance? Or I I see it with this one. I see it less so with the next one. Okay, okay. So here's question number seven. <laughs> I, mean, I still see it a bit. There is something about the face which is quite similar. If you grew in like a stubbly beard like that, and hadn't got glasses on, yeah, and no, hadn't I... got glasses on, it'd be like it'd be like you're that person, and maybe aged a couple of decades as well. Oh, maybe yeah, maybe one or two. Um. Well, there we go. Um, uh, this and this um, this next one was the this is the the next one is the final one from using this website. But it was the most surprising I think <laughs> I, we found using this website. <laughs> I mean, I mean, what was the name of this person? This famous person. Wow. The, uh, the 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 picture that they offered up didn't have glasses on, so they thought this person looked like you even without the glasses. I really don't know how I feel about that. Um, I mean, I think I think good. I mean. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd take it, Jack. Yeah. Um, okay, then this is back to my opinion now with question number nine. Question okay. number nine. Question number nine. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, sure. Hopefully, my hair won't go white um, anytime soon. But never know. And um, finally, of course, uh, which I think looks this next one looks the most like Jack. <laughs> uh, uh, um, yeah, there we go. No offense, Jack. You're looking really good looking in this picture. Thanks. Well, um, thank you very much. There, uh, I've got you know a first aid, a first aid kit in the background just to make sure I can. Uh... Just in case you do patch up any tiny little oopsies. Yeah. Okay, I'm exactly. going to run through these again. So question number one: We had well, who's this famous person who looks like Jack? Uh, then who's this one? <laughs> um, then followed by this one. Who's this? That looks a bit like Jack. Then this person. Who's this person? Question number five. Who's this? Question number six. Who's this person that looks like Jack? And then this person. Looks exactly like Jack, uncanny, like twins. Um, and then this person, of course. Who's this person? Which exactly like Jack. And then this person. Who's this? Who's this? And finally, who's this? And as a little treat, Jack. I've got some. I've got some honourable mentions that didn't quite make the cut. Oh, brilliant! Okay. Okay, so of course, starting off with um, the Milky Bar Kid. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, then, did you ever see the program My Parents Are Aliens? Yeah. Because there was a, a minor character called Trent in it, which I feel like just has a bit of a U vibe about him. Yeah, I know what you mean. I mean, I, uh, I, Annabelle I... offered up um, this person who, from, the, <laughs> from the band Fun. I can't remember what his name is. I think it is Jack something. Oh, what? Yeah, I, I'll take that. I'll definitely take that. Um, and, and then, of course, this stock image. Wait, sorry. Oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> that stock image looks exactly like Jack. And most importantly, Jack, I found a, I found from the world of media a double mm -hmm. act which looks exactly like me and you. Does that look? Like the two of us. Okay. Oh, there we go. And what? here it is. These two elves. <laughs> look, uncanny. Is it as it's the boys? Uh have you seen Onward? No. Oh. I can't get over how much the guy in the red shirt looks like you though, Jack. <laughs> I think, I think my family said that as well. We watched it over lockdown. What if? Okay, here we go. Um, there we go. So that was that round out, over and done with. On to round four. This is our specialist round. Oh, lovely. On, on Gogglebox, this uh, wonderful background created by Kieran uh, without without my suggestion. So that was lovely. When was to, that? To open I up. can't. I have no idea when that picture was taken. I just. <laughs> no, I don't know either. Alexi Cheadle in the background as well. It's really yeah, cool. of course. So we've got a round on Gogglebox. Jack, why have we got a round on Gogglebox? Uh, we ran on Gogglebox because that was what the last the team was the best team name as thought by us 
um, picked as their specialist round for this week last week. So for uh, in turn for this week, uh, the team with the best name will get to pick a specialist round for the next edition of the quiz. Uh, so uh, wait, very excited. Yeah. So, Jack, you feel free to read. I'll only go to question number one. Good stuff. Question number one. Gogglebox stars Pete and Sophie Sandiford have a family link to which com- British comedy act? Gogglebox stars Pete and Sophie Sandiford have a family link to which British comedy act? Thank you to Kieran for this round once again. Jack, are you a Gogglebox, Gogglebox watcher? I have watched many episodes in the past, yes. I, uh, I think I know the, uh, the stars in question. Mm. Right, so, question yeah. number two. Question two. Name either of the two distinct households who have appeared on every series of UK Gogglebox. Name either of the two distinct households who have appeared on every series of UK Gogglebox. Um, It's a good question, actually, that one. It's a good Um, question indeed. So, yeah, give give that some some thought. Um, Right. Um, Question number three. Question number three, how many different code line songs are used as a theme slash transition music in Gogglebox? How many different code line songs are used as theme slash transition music in Gogglebox? That's what I had to do at the beginning. I had to go off the slide so I could find I could write down the name of these songs. Uh, that's very smart. Or this, yeah. song. or this song. <laughs> or this zero song. Or any yeah, songs that may or may not be used. I think I think I covered my bases. You covered all bases, I think you have. Um, so there we go. If you know your code line and you know your call box, this is the one for you. Question number four. Question number four. Which former Gogglebox cast member won the 16th series of I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here? Which former Gogglebox cast member won the 16th series of I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here? I feel like Gogglebox has very much entered just the public, the like wide knowledge from from all, all areas really at this point. yeah it definitely has i mean i i think it's, it's a great show um in my opinion it's a you know good watch indeed now now there's two famous um celebrity vicars not yeah, just richard true. coles there's there's someone else as well who I what, about, what about your dad you're not not retained celebrity spe- uh, celebrity status sadly yet but maybe one day question number five uh serva perunat which is based on Gogglebox, is broadcast on YLE TV2 in which European country? Serva Perunat, which is based on Gogglebox, is broadcast in on YLE TV2 in which European country? I reckon it might be like ELA TV2. Yeah, I don't want to risk it. Yeah, that's true. That's fair enough. Um, so there we go. If you know that, well done. Good stuff. Impeccable pronunciation, by the way, Jack. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, well, not the first time I pronounced it, Hugo. <laughs> this isn't this isn't his first silver s- s- paranoid. <laughs> uh, Gogglebox narrators Craig Cash and Carolina Hearn previously appeared together in which TV centered sitcom? Gogglebox narrators Craig Cash and Caroline Hearn previously appeared together in which TV centered sitcom? Hmm. TV centered sitcom. I guess so. I won't question it. I won't question it. I think I know the, the sitcom potentially, but um, yeah, good stuff. There so go. um, good stuff yeah, the, the picture behind is. <laughs> I mean, that picture of you is a is a classic. I think Where I've is that, that from? One. That's from my garden. Oh, with all the plums. No, it's that's you having a a, a rattler on my. Uh, on the garden table. You seen that picture? I'm not sure I have, but I'll take your word for it. Question number seven. Uh, and this is why we don't want our daughter to go on a gap year. She'll go across a rope bridge because all her friends say it's safe. And then crocodiles will eat her. Giles said. Giles Wood said this while watching a film from which franchise? Do you want me to do my impression? Do it. And this is why we don't want our daughter going on a gap year. She'll go across a rope bridge because all her friends say it's safe. And then crocodiles will eat her. That's really good. Um, are you related to Giles? Uh, I'm related to a Giles. That's not true. I'm not related. I don't think I don't know anyone who I'm related to called, called Giles. I just wanted to like suggest that I maybe related to oh, either Giles Corrin or Giles Brandreth. What? That's so many famous Giles. 
That's it, I think. Yeah, maybe. I get confused with the, word, with the name Piers. Piers. Piers Brosnan. Yeah, or Piers, who is, uh, I think, Dudley's best friend in The Philosopher's Stone. Oh, yeah, Piers Polkis. Yeah. Question number eight. Question number eight. Which 2020 broadcast, extensively covered on Gogglebox, is estimated to be the most watched television program in the UK of the, 20, of the 21st century so far? Which 2020 broadcast, extensively covered on Gogglebox, I find it really hard to say, is estimated to be the most watched television program in the UK of the 21st century so far? Hugo, you say the word Gogglebox. 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 Is it it's a bit hard to get have the the, the G and the B quite close Google, to the Google, Yeah. Right. Um question number nine. Question number nine. On the first of July nineteen sixty seven, BBC two coverage of which sporting event marked the beginning of the first scheduled colour television broadcast in Europe? Um on twenty on the first of July nineteen sixty seven. BBC coverage of which sporting event marked the beginning of the first scheduled colour television broadcasting in Europe? Um, Interesting stuff. Yeah. Um, this this being related to Gogglebox in that it's related to TV. television. <laughs> yeah, I like the by question nine. That's what's starting to potentially uh, be necessary. Um, so there we go. So uh, okay, when we go on to the next question, Jack, I want your eyes on the top of the screen. I okay. not to read the words until they come, until okay. you read them naturally, okay? All right, okay. So question number 10. Gogglebox has many international versions, uh, sorry, but also features people from all parts of the United Kingdom, such as Manchester, Bristol, Wales, and even County Durham. Another part of the United Kingdom is Suffolk, home to beautiful landscapes, long beaches, and Jack Rawdon. Jack studies geography, but if instead he studied history, he might have learned about which historic monument oriented towards the sunrise on the summer solstice and located on Salisbury Plain. That was, that was a... what a ride. Is that how you pronounce Salisbury Plain? Salisbury Plain. Is that Salisbury. how you say it? Yeah. You don't say Salisbury Plain? No, I say Salisbury Plain. Oh, and I said Salisbury Plain. I said it wrong. Just now. No, wait. Hang on. I don't know. Salisbury Plain. Salisbury Plain. But what's the answer to this this fair question? Hmm. Should we nip through these again? Yes. Jack, feel free. Go ahead. Okay. Um, Pete and Sophie have a family link to which act? Name either of the two households who appear on every Gogglebox series. Gogglebox series. How many different code line songs are there in that show? Which former cast member won the 16th series of I'm a Celebrity? Server Perunat is broadcast in which European country? Uh, the narrators of that show previously appeared in which TV set of sitcom? Uh, that quotation was said by Giles Wood in regard to which film? Wait, no, which franchise? <laughs> um... Which 2020 broadcast is estimated to be the most watched television programme in the UK of the 21st century so far? Uh, on the 1st of July 1967, uh, which event marked the beginning of colour broadcasting in Europe? And uh, if I'd done history, um, I might have learned about which prehistoric monument oriented on the towards the sunrise of the summer solstice and located on Salisbury Plain. There we go. What there a go. For you. And of course, um, we of course had to have a wipeout round. What? I know, right? In fact, how does the wipeout oh, work? Gosh. Um, so the wipeout round works like this. So we're going to give you 10 questions. Uh, they are going to be general knowledge. They can all be disconnected from each other. But we one very important thing you need to keep in mind, and that is that any question that you get wrong, but you still write it down, then that's zero points for the whole round if you write it down and you get it wrong. You can choose not to write anything down and that won't subtract, that won't mean zero points for the whole round, but anything you write down is wrong will make it zero points for the whole round. So be very confident on your answers before you write them down. Um, thank you very much to Annabelle for this round. Annabelle has, has I don't know, she's discovered an undiscovered seam of slightly cursed looking animated films. This one evidently is called Food Fight and an all-star cast considering I've never heard of it, which must mean it's brilliant. 
course. So, uh, Jack, go ahead. Question number one. Okay, uh, which work of classic literature starts with the quote, last night I dreamt I went to Mandalay again? Uh, which work of classical literature starts with the quote, last night I dreamt I went to Mandalay again? Oh, should we do alternate questions again with this one? Yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a good idea. Um, so, yeah, I thought we completely exhausted the animated film scene, but as Annabelle's very incredibly showing there, it's seemingly endless supply. Oh, and yeah. I think it has the actors on the top, but at the bottom it has the name of the characters. Yeah, that's really Featuring bizarre. Charlie the Tuna, something that Twinkle the Kid, Mr. Clean, Mrs. Butterworth, Hawaiian Punchy, Punchy, Hawaiian Punchy, Punchy. I think it is. Yeah. The California Raisins, Chef Boyardee. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh wait, no, they're they're all um flipping um American food mascots. Are they? Yeah. Oh, I see. That's why. Um, <laughs> that's why I guess. Uh, Question number two. Well, we're at it. Do you? Go? Oh me. What wind? What winged insects? The lepidopterists study. What winged insect do lepidopterists study? Why are they throwing out so many uh, perfectly good food? There, Hugo. They're, they're throwing out. It's not. Uh, we don't like to see that. We don't stand for that here. No, we don't. We really don't. So if you know your uh, lepidoptery, then uh, this is for you. This is the question for you. Yeah. Right. Question number three, Jack. Question number three: How many members of the American disco group Village People are present in the 1978 music video for their song YMCA? How many members of the American disco group Village People are present in the 1978 music video for their song YMCA? Um, I that's that is a difficult question. I pretty hard risky if you want to go for it but maybe yeah, it's worth it's... the risk to try and get the clean sweep you definitely have a, a good advantage if you got this one right because let me tell you it is a properly good prize this week i'm very yeah i've heard very good things about it so uh... question number four who is the most recent tennis player to have won a grand slam title on each surface hard clay and grass in one calendar year who is the most recent tennis player to have won a grand slam title on each surface hard clay and grass in one calendar year uh, we're not including uh, carpet in this instance. <laughs> I mean, luckily there isn't a uh, Grand Slam played on carpet. Is there not a carpet so... Grand Slam? No. Typical, typical. There actually hasn't been um, an ATP um, main tour carpet tournament for about 15 years. That's disappointing. I know. Is it because people fall over and get carpet burns? I don't know. Why. I really don't know why, why they have phased out. It's because, I mean, it's a, it's a really fast court type. So, um, a lot of the I think for the sake of time, we might have to nip this in the bud a bit, I'm afraid, Jack. Okay. But please go ahead and read question number five. Question number five What is the second smallest country in the world? It is also the smallest United Nations member state and the smallest country with a coastline. What is the second smallest country in the world? It is also the smallest United Nations member state and the smallest country with a coastline. Hmm. Hmm. I'm trying to think about the test question. That's actually. <clears throat> anyway, so if you know this one, uh, write it down. It might be right, but don't write it down unless you're very confident. That's very true. Apparently, the, the film is where the cursed dog detective character comes from. I'll flip. What? Oh, the, that the dog de detective character in the background there. <gasps> Oh my god, I thought that was a person. Oh, that was very difficult to look at. That's Question awful. number six. Which English queen did Natalie Portman play in a 2008 historical drama starring opposite Scarlett Johansson? Which English queen did Natalie Portman play in a 2008 historical drama starring opposite Scarlett Johansson? Hmm. If you're a fan of Natalie Portman, this might be the one for you. Equally, if you're a fan of Scarlett Johansson. Equally, Equally, if you're a fan of historical dramas. Shouldn't All those Scarlett things. Johansson's name be Scarlett Johans Dotre? I know. I don't know what to say um, to that. I know what you can say. That. Question number seven. Question number seven. How many laws of motion did Isaac Newton formulate? How many laws of motion did Isaac Newton formulate? There we hmm. go. What could that 
possibly be? What could it possibly be? Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, Eva Longoria, what has she done? I always, I, I think I only recognise her when I look her up. Yeah, same. Yeah, she's in a really rubbish program on Netflix um, about sort of like a, this family, and it just it wasn't it wasn't very good from the small bit I saw. But question number eight. Well, question number eight. Uh, what, oh, you. Uh, what? Which specific mammal is the largest animal ever known to have lived on the planet? Its tongue alone can weigh as much as an elephant. What specific mammal is the largest animal ever known to have lived on the planet? Its tongue alone can weigh as much as an elephant. That is a uh, an absolutely wild fact. Um, imagine That's an quite animal a heavy tongue. so heavy that its tongue is worth weighs as much as an elephant. Tell you what, if that went to lick an ice cream, lick a Mister Whippy, that cone's not staying intact. <laughs> it's not, is it? Um, yeah. Yeah, I thought so. She was, Eva Longoria plays uh, a character in Brooklyn Nine Nine. A couple of episodes. That rings a bell. Yeah. Do you, do you right. know? Um, yeah. All right. Question number nine, Jack. Question number nine in Japanese: What are kanji, hiragana, and katakana? In Japanese: What are kanji, hiragana, and katakana? What could they be? What are what they? Are you confident? One of those ones where, unless you're one hundred percent sure, I wouldn't put it down. You never know what you don't want to because you want to be putting answers down so you can get points, but you don't want to throw it all away. So, and uh, of yeah. course, finally, final question of the quiz. The final the one. Quiz. Question number ten. Which geography student at the College of St. Hilton's indeed is the outgoing social secretary and has organised events throughout a very difficult year? Which geography student at the College of St. Hilton's indeed is the outgoing social secretary and has organised events throughout a very difficult year? Oh, no idea what the answer to that question is. Who could it be? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. You can throw in a middle name if you want to challenge yourself. Oh, I wouldn't if I were you. Um... Let's go through these again. Question number one. What classic work of literature starts with last night I dreamt I went to Manly again? Question number two. What wind, in what wind insect the Lepidopterist study? Question three. How many American, uh, how many village people are present in the music video for YMCA? Question number four. Who's the most recent player to win a Grand Slam title on hard got clay and grass in one calendar year? Question number seven. What's the second smallest country in the world and the smallest United Nations member state and the smallest country with a coastline? Question six. Which English queen did Natalie Portman play in a 2008 historical drama starring opposite Scarlett Johansson? Question seven. How many laws of motion did Isaac Newton formulate? Question eight. Which specific mammal is the largest animal ever known to have lived on the planet? Its tongue alone can weigh as much as an elephant. Question nine. In Japanese, what are kanji, hiragana and katakana? And question number 10, which geography student at the College of St. Hilton's indeed is the outgoing social secretary and it was organised events throughout oh. a very difficult year. So there you go. That's the end of the main quiz. That's the, pens down, please. Pens down. No more answering questions for you, please, teams. But now it is, of course, time for the answers. So no go way. A pen and get marking these. So we start off with our links round. Question number one, of course. Oh, Jack, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, wait, no, I read that, didn't I? Oh, sure, I'll do then. Question one, uh, the metonym for the civil service it, we were looking for was Whitehall. It was Whitehall. Uh, are you more, are you cemented, do you know the link, Jack? Yeah. Uh, Candle in the Wind was dedicated to Marilyn Monroe. To Marilyn Monroe. Um, Nuevo Leon, the capital, is, of course, Monterey. Monterey. Uh, it's the same. This was, of course, Russell T. Davis. Russell Davis will give you as well. Russell T. Davis. Um, it's white. White has a slight advantage. You get, if you start, you do a bit better, as it turns out. This is, of course, a sparrow. A sparrow is what we're after there. Um, this is Nori. Nori. Dried seaweed down at one of the dwarfs. Brother of Dory and Ori. 
Um, Edward I was, of course, the hammer of the Scots. The hammer of the Scots. Um, they are called giant killers. Giant killers. We'll give you giant slayer if you put that as well. But giant killer is what we're after. And the link, Jack, got any ideas? I think it's um, the word Jack. It is the word Jack. It's Jack. Look, there's the link. Look, we'll just run through these again. Jack Whitehall, of course, famous comedian. Jack Monroe, uh, um, a some sort of on- online content creator and also activist. Um, Monterey Jack, type of cheese. Uh, Jack Russell, type of dog. Jack White, um, lead singer of the White Stripes. I was tricky though because it could have equally been Jack Black. Yeah. Uh, Jack Sparrow, uh, famous uh, Michael Bolton song. Uh, Jack Anori. It doesn't quite work, but close enough. Classic <laughs> storytelling one. Uh, Jack Hammer is like a pneumatic drill, I believe. Uh, and Jack the Giant Killer, of course. Jack who killed a giant. So the link was, of course, Jack. And Jack, here we go. You can get to see if you um, if you recognise the names of these places in Suffolk. Okay. Um, Newton. I don't recognise that one at all. Yeah, Newton. So question one was Newton. Question two. Uh, Cavendish. Yep, yeah, that's a lovely place. Uh, in West Suffolk, I'm pretty sure. Um, that's Gibraltar. I thought like you might. Do you know the place in Gibraltar? No, I don't know Gibraltar in Suffolk. It's funny enough. I'm sure it's lovely. I'm sure it is. Uh, Lindsay rings about. I think there's a Lindsay tie, potentially. Yeah, that does ring a bell. Uh, it's possible I misread it on the Wikipedia page, but Lindsay was what we're after. Um, I, of course, absolutely classic town. I've not heard of that. It's so Avenue Framlingham. Ah, uh, that helps. Thank you. <laughs> Question of six. Um, Houston. Yeah, I don't know. I do not know where that is in Suffolk. Oh, fair enough. Again, a small place probably. Do you know. know this one? Walpole. Yes, I know where Walpole is. Um, Robert Walpole, of course, in the background there. Of course, yeah. Uh, Hepworth. Don't know Hepworth. But I feel like I should. I feel like it's something like... I, feel like it's something like cause I know a Halesworth, so I'm not surprised there's a Hepworth. Um, <laughs> it sounds like, yeah, the sort of place that might be a thing. Yeah. Snape, of course. Snape Maltings. And in Snape Malting, there's a bit of artwork by um, Barbara Hepworth. Oh. Yeah. Mad, huh? Hey, that's a good link. Yeah. Oh, it all connects together. And um, Have you heard the place Berg? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bruh. <laughs> no. Do you pronounce it bruh? I don't know, but all bruh is obviously, all, all bruh is, is written all it, would, it wouldn't surprise me at all if people in Suffolk refer to that as, refer to this place as bruh. If it's consistent with all bruh, then it is it pronounced bruh. Oh dear. Right, there we go. That was that around. So hopefully you've heard of some of those. Or maybe you haven't, but that's fine. But hopefully you got some of those answers. Here, then we have our Jack alike. This is, of course, uh, content creator Tyler Oakley. Tyler Oakley. Then we had Thomas Brody Sangster. Thomas Brody Sangster. Does look exactly like Jack there. Adam Scott. Adam Scott here. Of various things fame. Prulith. Prulith was this one. Uh, George Orwell here. Of course. Magnificent there. Uh, Tim Allen. From the Santa Claus, I believe. And possibly other things. Nice. Chuck Norris. Of course. I mean, famously. Well. Chuck Norris. And more than anyone, Sandra O. Oh. Of course. Sandra O. Oh. Uh, Andy Warhol as well. And of course, Stuart Little. Are you happy to look like Stuart Little, Jack? Of course, yeah, absolutely. Why wouldn't I be? Yeah, it's, that's a good it's point. The most flattering of all of them. Uh, go ahead, Jack. <laughs> Um, Chuckle Brothers, that's the Chuckle Brothers, of course. Um, they are either the Siddiqui family or Stephen from Brighton. If you've got Stephen, that's good enough. Is that, is that I think it's, he's been with different like companions, but throughout the thing, Stephen's always been the same. Stephen from Brighton's always been there. And the Siddiquis. Yeah. Um, that is, uh, I don't know this one actually, two, three? In Leicester. Uh, it's two, yeah. Two. Uh, it's, it's Brand New Day and Perfect World. Which are two songs which sound like they have exactly the same name. Brand New Day and Perfect World, like, but I would, you wouldn't be able to tell to say they're different songs. Uh, this is Scarlet Moffat, of course. Uh, six six Moffat, theories, of course. Scarlet Moffat. Uh, Finland, Sova Perunat. Of course. Shows yeah. Finland. Surely you got Finland. 
the royal family are the TV based sitcom there. What's TV so based about it? They all sit and watch TV, I think, quite a lot. Oh. Um, of course, Indiana Jones is number seven. Specifically, the Temple of Doom. Apparently. Yeah, They're of course. Watching. Classic scene. Uh, Boris Johnson's COVID-19 statement marked the 23rd of March. That's, that's a bit depressing. Uh, there you go. It's coming up to a year since then, so everyone, I'm sure, is looking forward to that. There's so something around that word, because it has a bit of that. Uh, Wimbledon, yes. That was the answer there, Wimbledon. Wimbledon. And number 10, of course, has got to be Stonehenge, which it is. Oh, wow. Whoa. <laughs> that was exciting. Stuff, Jack. Just for you. Wow. Uh, then we had a wipeout. Reminder, if you get any of these last 10 questions wrong, that's zero points for the entire round. It was Rebecca, of course. Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier, but just Rebecca's fine. Butterflies and moths. Butterflies and moths. Uh, six. There were six people who were present in YMCA. I wouldn't be able to name their characters, but there were lots of them. Um, Serena Williams. It was Serena Williams. I don't know what year it was, but nice well done to her. Potentially 2016, maybe? Potentially 2016. Monaco is what we're after here. Monaco. Anne Boleyn. That's right. I like this question because you, you always, when you think of English queen, you always think, oh, must be a sovereign monarch. But no, because it could be queen consort. Uh, three laws of motion. I believe they were Newton's first law, Newton's second law, and Newton's third law. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, uh, yeah. Question number eight. The blue whale, of course. A quiz staple, the blue whale. Uh, Kanji, Hiragana, and Katakana are three alphabets. They're all alphabets. And this is, of course, <laughs> the inimitable, not just friend of the show, not just family of the show, the show himself, oh, Jack Rodden. No way. Well, Jack Rodden, who is not. at the moment less than three years old. <laughs> um, right, let's uh, get the... So now... If you would be so kind. Yep. Uh, make a post. And so, one time you're watching this, hopefully there'll be a post up on the page, Hillbeat SRC, that you can go to, add up your scores, come up with a team name, and you could win a very sought after prize. There we go. And that's posted. I almost posted it as myself again. But oh, I didn't, so that's fine. Which is great. Oh. Right. Okay. You posted it, Jack. In the right place? Not yes. just uh, you didn't it. It's it lovely. So now Yeah, I did double check. It's time, Jack, for a part a part of the show that's become a fan favourite, or at least a me favourite, <laughs> called um, Are You Smarter Than a Social Sec? Which, of course, what, what it, as you are leaving the position of social sec, this will be the last one, the grand finale. Whoa. And so this is the part of the show where it's, it pains me to say, self-professed brain box, Jack Rawdon, answer some no! questions. No! <laughs> I didn't say it. Answer some questions. And if you have more right than Jack, then you are smarter than social sec. Uh, this week, of course, it's a special one. So the theme is, thank you to Karen for this, by the way. It is geography. It is geography, and as an extra, as an as an extra homage, um, um, Karen has written the questions in the style of Jack Rawdon. No way, surely not. So the first one, okay. Here's question number one. No way. In the Kulin, there's this amazing. A mountain, Sigur Diag, which means Red Peak, and it has a crazily difficult summit known as the Inaccessible Pinnacle, often cunningly abbreviated to In Pin. You'll never guess what island it's on. That's the Isle of Sky. Sky. Oh, off to off to a good start. Okay, question number two. Question number two. <laughs> Insane! Around Malham in North Yorkshire, there's a gorgeously surreal landscape made from which type of rock, also, which also appears on the bucolic barren in County Clare? Uh, lime, limestone, limestone pavement. Limestone, good knowledge. Okay. Oh, this Question is very three. fun. Georgia is an absolutely phenomenally stunning nation, and tourism <laughs> is increasing. Uh, 
is increasingly an amazing option there. But how many people does it contain to the nearest million? Well, that's a difficult question. I'm not sure I can get this one. Uh, let's go with 16 million. I'll give you a clue. It's a single figures million. Oh, really? You are? Okay. Um, seven million. Seven million. Okay. Question number four. The summer, solst the summer solstice is such a beautifully symbolic tradition. As we heard before, Stonehenge is an absolutely glorious location to see it on this wondrous day. Yeah. And what, <laughs> at what time will the sun rise on June the 21st, 2020 at Stonehenge? Oh, that's really difficult. You can have for like 10 minutes either way. I actually have looked this up before. Um, I'm going to go with... For 4.30. 4.30, okay. Question number five. <laughs> a fact that can only be described as a, a, astonishingly outrageous is that when considering ceremonial counties in England by their highest point, Durham has exactly as many counties higher than it as Suffolk has counties lower than it. <laughs> that is a glorious fact. That? Uh, that's amazing. What, what is the number, and could you name those counties living up on the extremes? Good question. I'll, I will, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll tell you afterwards, but just name the numbers for good enough for me. Okay. Um, well, let's go with four. Going for four, four higher and four lower than, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, I might actually work with Durham. So Durham, so Cumbria, North Yorkshire, uh, Derbyshire, Northumberland. No. Yeah, I'm going for four. Yeah, for four. Okay. Right. It's question number one. Of course, it was Sky. You are the Sky expert. I won't dispute on that one. Uh, limestone as well. Nicely done. I'm afraid there are four million people in Georgia. Oh wow! That that was I think I might. Um, I'm. I, you didn't quite reach the, thre the threshold with the time either. It's uh, four fifty-two a.m. But a good guess. Ah, uh, too far south. And um, it wasn't four. I'm afraid. I don't. You maybe need to talk with the truth, Kieran. But apparently, it's only two. It's just, just Cumbria and Northumberland, that are higher. And yeah, what would you I, guess? I mean that does make sense. I just what would you guess for the lower what the, what the lower, lower a lower a highest point lower than the highest point in Suffolk? Um, I think it's is Merseyside one of them. Uh, what I've got here is Norfolk and the City of London. Oh, hang on, someone's a bit frozen. Oh, is this me frozen or are you frozen, Hugo? Are, are you, am I back? Are you back? Hello? It was Hello? Norfolk and the city of London. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. So you got I two. didn't know about I wasn't sure about Norfolk. You got um, two in your, in, in your final hurrah, but very well done, Jack. Thank you. Thank you for being the social sack. And if you got if you uh, got more at home, you are smart in social sack, but you're, of course, not as lovely as, as the social sack because that uh, is not a fee that can be reached. Uh, so let's let's no, take no. a little let's take a little look see at uh, what the scores are like. Uh, we we won't be having a quiz next week, uh, but keep your eyes peeled on social media to to see when the next one might be. It will be soon. We haven't we haven't left you forever. Yeah, absolutely not. Um, oh. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, there's an absolutely unbelievable reference to um, you know, you know the song "What Does the Fox Say?" Yeah, I do. Yeah, you know they they had like a follow up song called "What Is the Meaning of Stonehenge?" I do. Yeah, I've, I've listened to and it. Someone referenced that in their team name. I think it might be too niche of a reference to to make it to the to the shortlist, but a very good reference, nonetheless. Okay, here, here are the three options Jack to pick from. Okay. Um, 
Out of crackers, guess I'll have my Monterey Jack Rawdon. <laughs> all right, yeah. <laughs> um, Jack of all trades, master of the quiz. Oh. And Jack Rawdon, Jack Rawdon lookalike or just glasses wearer? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's really difficult. They're, they're, they're very good. Uh, I feel like I feel like I can't choose uh, Jack of all trades, master of the quiz. I feel like that's a bit. Uh, like I, I can't, in good faith, choose that one. Oh, just, um, just while, while you're pondering, what was the first one? We do have to say a very happy 60th birthday to Anne, who apparently is the smartest member of Team Gardener. The Gardener is, of course, very much longer than the quiz. So, a very hearty happy birthday from us, from us to you, Anne. Happy birthday. Um, I think Hugo. What was the first one again? Uh, out of crackers, I guess I'll have them, my Monterey Jack Rawdon. Yeah, I might have to go with that one. Brilliant. Okay, they, they have won the team name prize. So, team name winners. Round, please. And you will get to pick, have that round at the next quiz we do, rest assured. Good stuff. Um, so, you, so how, how are the scores looking? How are the scores? Lots of good scores. Lots of good scores indeed. Uh, from what I see, the highest score is an impressive 40 points. That is very impressive. Almost four marks. Well, sort of. So very well done. The king is dead. Long live the king. <laughs> um, no comment on that name. Um, who got 40 points. Very well done. So this. Uh, we have a special prize for you, if I can, if I have it. Um, hang on, hang on a moment. Just it's uh, have I got it there? One moment, sorry, I just need to figure it out. It's very exciting. You go, okay, we're okay. all waiting with bated breath. Yeah, nearly there. Hopefully this will work. Can you see it? Yes. Can you see the video? Can you see a oh, picture no. of Simon Forrest? Uh, we, I can see the video. Yes. Okay. I don't know if... Can you... Uh, hang on. I don't know if I'm sharing sound or not. Oh, this isn't this isn't going this isn't as going as well as as it was meant to be. Okay, it's fine. Hopefully, you can hear it. Jack, can you... So, good evening, afternoon, or morning. Can you hear that? Yes. Brilliant. Okay, I'll continue. Here we go. Whatever time it is, wherever you are, joining this, the most splendid of all uh, inquisitorial events available within college and the university, and indeed possibly the northern hemisphere. Uh, I'm delighted to join you to issue my congratulations to the team that's come out top tonight, that's trumped the others, that's gone that extra inch or mile and nudged themselves over the grand horizons of the great pageantry of human knowledge to demonstrate their fine minds and skills. And gathered as I am here, you'll see, amongst the fruits of much of that knowledge, I look at it and think, it's but a paltry, paltry contribution to that required to succeed in this the most entertaining and most exacting of quizzes so many congratulations to you and also i want to say many congratulations and a special thank you to the young the beautiful the witty and stylish jack rawdon one of the men who's been so <laughs> sent bringing you the pleasures of the hill bead bar quiz, the Vern quiz, over this, the most challenging of years, a year that Jack could never have envisaged would have to run as it has, and throughout has kept the precious gift, the shining stone that is the Vern quiz, burnished and warm, close to his heart, that it might be to ours. Congratulations again to that team, and thank you to you, Jack Rawdon. Oh, that's it. How oh, rousing was that, honestly? Wow. Well, thank you very much, Simon. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, all of us are 
have been everyone's been great this year. Um, but especially, but especially, especially Jack, I will say. Um, so uh, what a good time. Ho- hope you enjoyed the quiz. Um, I mean, we will miss you, Jack, but you will be uh, here every week anyway. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the um, yeah, I, I'll still be here. Obviously, the um, the kind of the 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 shift made is is to obviously now towards Hugo. So very exciting to see uh, Hugo as a uh, social sex. See what he. Will be, but, I'm very excited to see. Everything but rest assured, Jack's not going anywhere. Got coming up, you're all very excited to see. But no, I'm I'm sticking around for a bit longer. But um, it'll be all the 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 uh, the rounds will be about about the are you smart social sex will now be uh, Hugo based. So self-proclaimed brain box. Yeah, exactly. And All right, we well, can reveal um, that whatever the next yeah. quiz is, the special round will be on Pixar. So look forward to that. A special Ooh. round on Pixar. So that shall be a good time. Good stuff. Um, I guess I guess we're coming to the end of it then. Um, wow. Well, you know, I, I just want to say thank you everyone for uh, for watching. It's been a funny year, um, but. Uh, a brilliant one in, in in a lot of ways and uh thank you for sticking with us uh we've done what so almost a year of these quizzes now um and uh please keep watching we're gonna be back and we're gonna keep on doing what we're doing and hope you keep on watching so uh thank you thank you very much and uh, and rest assured that if we were in the same room with jack we would be presenting him with a with a bottle of wine and, and a, a massive bunch of flowers but but so, but please do send him a picture of you clapping or just just clap where you are if you're still watching just clap where you are in memory of jack for all he's done for us he's still alive <laughs> uh, but 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 yes there we go what a time right. so bye <laughs> yeah thank